Hey guys, we are starting unit two, which is all about equations for the most part. Um, before we can get into equations, we need to talk about expressions. And the first thing we're going to talk about today is combining like terms. We're going to answer the question, how do I simplify expressions involving like terms? So let's talk about what an expression is. This would be an example of an expression right here. An algebraic expression consists of adding and subtracting numbers and variables. There is no equal sign in an expression. So if there's no equal sign, we are just simplifying. We're not doing opposite operations yet. We will get into that. Okay, let's talk about terms next. A term is a part of an expression that is separated by addition and subtraction. So like in this expression right here, the terms were 9x, 2, and y. A term may be a number, like 2, a variable, like y, or the product of a number and a variable, like 9x. 9x really means 9 times x. Okay, and then the last word we're going to talk about is a coefficient. A coefficient is the number in front of a variable. So it'd be like the 9 in 9x. And just like we talked about up here, the variable is multiplied by the coefficient. Okay, so can, before we can combine like terms, let's talk about what like terms are. Terms are like if they have the same variable and the same exponent. We can't combine them unless they have the same variable and the same exponent. So let's go through these few examples and see if these are like or unlike. So number one, negative 8x and negative 8, those are unlike. Because negative 8x has an x on it and the negative 8 is just a number, so I can't combine those. Okay, number two, 12x squared and negative 3x squared. Those both have an x squared. So these would be like terms. Okay, number three, are the terms like or unlike? One third K and three K. I'm just focusing on the variables right now since they both have a K, then these are like terms. I could combine them. Okay, and then the last one, 22 X squared and five X. Those are not like terms because this has an x squared and this just has an x. I can't combine them, remember, unless they have the same exponent. So these would be unlike terms. Okay, now that we know what like terms are, we can talk about combining them. So expressions can be simplified by combining like terms. You need to make sure that you use the sign that is directly in front of the term when combining. So what we're going to do is we are going to go through and look for the like terms and then we'll combine what we can. Okay, so I have 13k plus 2m minus 3k plus 2m. So I'm going to highlight 13k. The other term that is like with 13k is negative 3k. So now I'm going to combine 13k minus 3k. And 13K minus 3K is 10K. I did that by doing 13K minus 3K. Okay, now I'm going to look at the rest of this expression. Positive 2M and positive 2M. So now I'm going to combine 2M and 2M. And 2M plus 2M is 4M. So that would be our final answer because I cannot combine the K and the M, but I combined what I could. Okay, let's look at number five. I have a little bit more going on. I'm going to use the same process. 3Z will combine with this other positive 3Z. So 3Z plus 3Z is 6Z. And then the next set I have is 5x and then negative x. That negative x has an invisible 1 in front of it. So I just need to think of 5 minus 1 and 5 minus 1 is 4 and then I'm going to put the x at the end of it. Okay, then my last term, 
positive 2y. That doesn't have anything to combine with, but I still need to include it in my final answer because it's not just going away. So I'm just going to bring it down. So there's the final answer, 6z plus 4x plus 2y. In math, it is most proper to write our expressions in alphabetical order. So this would be the most proper answer right here because it's in alphabetical order, but it is not wrong if you write it like the first way that I circled it. Okay, number six, I have some fractions. Don't be afraid of them because you have the calculator. We're just gonna go through the same process that we have been. So first thing I have is one third C. That will combine with the negative three C. So in the calculator, I'm just gonna put one third arrow out, minus three. And I get that repeating decimal. It's best not to round if we can avoid it. So I'm gonna convert it to a fraction. So I'm going to write those two terms combined as negative eight thirds C. Okay, then the next term I have is D and that will combine with two fifths D. So same thing, I'm gonna put it in my calculator. Remember, if there's a variable by itself, it has an invisible one in front of it. So it's going to be one plus two fifths. And I get 1.4, since I wrote my other term as a decimal, I'm gonna write, or as a fraction, I'm gonna write this one as a fraction as well. So I'm gonna put plus seven fifths D. And that's our final answer because the C and D will not combine any further. Okay, I have some decimals, that's okay. We're just gonna use our calculator again. So I have 1.6a, that'll combine with the negative a, and there's a third a. So now I'm just going to type that into my calculator to combine the a's. 1.6 minus, that has an invisible one in front of it, minus 0.6 and I get zero. So I don't have to write zero A, it's nothing. So those all just zeroed out. So now let's do the other part of the expression, B plus three B. That's really gonna be one plus three B. One plus 3.3. And I get 4.3 B. Again, I don't write the A's because it was zero A, which is nothing. I don't have any A's left. I only have 4.3 B. Okay, next one. My first term is five six X and negative two and one sixth X will combine with that. So I'm going to do five sixth minus I want this whole thing to be negative, so I'm gonna do two and one sixth. Close the parenthesis. So I did it like that so that the whole fraction would be negative. And I get negative 1.3 repeating, so I'm gonna convert it to a fraction and I get negative 4 thirds x. Okay, then I have negative y plus 3y. That's really going to be a negative 1 plus 3. Oops. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2, so that's going to be plus 2y. Okay, last one, it wants me to simplify the expression for the perimeter of the parallelogram. If you have forgotten, perimeter means to add all the sides. So, if that side is 3.5x minus four, this one is also 3.5x minus four, and then this side is also 2x. Now I'm going to combine what I can. I am just adding 
the four sides of the rectangle together. So I'm gonna add all of these sides. So I'm gonna add 2x plus 3.5x plus 2x plus 3.5x. So 2 plus 3.5 plus 2 plus 3.5, I get 11x. And then I have the constants, the numbers by themselves, negative 4 and negative 4. So you can do negative 4 minus 4 or negative 4 plus negative 4. Either way, you are going to get negative 8.